I invite you to hear once again the story of Christ's birth as told by Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord.
When you were a child, I'm sure many of you had a blanket that you slept with and took with you wherever you went. If you were like me, the blanket was your friend, your comfort and security. You could count on it always being there with you when you slept, when you played, when you ate. If it was ever forgotten or left somewhere, all hell broke loose. Any attempt at consolation or compromise from a parent didn't make any difference. You wanted your blanket. You needed your blanket. It was the only thing that mattered. The, and the idea of going forward without your blanket was simply unbearable. So was the case with the character Linus in the Peanuts cartoon. Linus is known for pretty much one thing, his ever-present security blanket. It was his friend, his comfort. And throughout the story of Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Lucy, Snoopy, Sally, and others all worked to no avail to separate Linus from his blanket. And even though his security blanket remains a major source of ridicule, for the otherwise mature and thoughtful Linus, he simply refuses to give it up until a very specific moment in the 1965 classic A Charlie Brown Christmas. You'll remember how Charlie Brown himself what finds himself depressed despite the onset of the cheerful holiday season, and Lucy suggests he direct a neighborhood Christmas play. But his best efforts are ignored and are mocked by his peers. At one point, Charlie Brown yells out, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? And lo and behold, Linus steps in and says, sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. In that climactic scene, when Linus shares what Christmas is all about, by reciting Luke's gospel account of Christ's birth, Linus drops his blanket. Most telling is the specific moment he drops it. When he speaks the angel's words, fear not. Could it be that the birth of Christ separates us from our fears? Could it be that the birth of Jesus Christ frees us from the habits we are unable or unwilling to break ourselves? Could it be that the birth of Jesus Christ allows us to simply drop the false security we have been grasping so tightly and learn to trust and cling to him instead. The world of 2017 can be a scary place. And most of us find ourselves grasping something temporary for security, whatever that thing may be. It is often very difficult for us to fear not in today's world. Whether it be the fear of the future, fear of the past, fear of not being good enough, fear of people different than you, fear of the government, fear of addiction, fear of guns, fear of terrorism, fear of war, fear of division, fear of uncertainty, fear of money, fear of death, fear that we won't be ready when the trials come. Some of us may even fear the church, fear love, or fear God. The Greek word for fear is phobia, which says a lot. Theologians and psychologists will tell you that fear drives us into patterns of reasoning that are far from reasonable, but more akin to, to reactionary patterns of cause and effect. Pick a fear, any fear, and it can become an irrational and, and can become out of control, an out of control experience that makes us captive and, and saps the joy from our midst. In the end, fear moves us away from the core of Christianity, which is love. 
It is no coincidence that the most frequent command in the Bible is fear not. And I wonder how many times in the story of Scripture that, that fear or terror precedes joy. It certainly does in Luke's account of Jesus' birth. God knows that we have a tendency to give in to the grip of fear, and that can undermine our, our full experience of God's goodness. And maybe one of the primary roadblocks to our having a full and deep experience of the incarnation of Jesus Christ, even all these years later, is not being able, not being willing to drop our blanket. At every point in the story, as Luke tells it, each episode gives more confirmation to what is happening and to who this Jesus is. But none of the characters in the story know what is coming next. Starting with Mary and Joseph going blanketless from the familiarity of of home to an unknown place, stable, barn, to have a child. To when an angel appeared to some nobody shepherds out in the fields. To when to then a multitude of angels appearing to those same shepherds just in case their fear and terror wasn't heightened enough already. To then, when the shepherds didn't simply remain in their fear, but went blanketless and swiftly to see what the Lord had told them was taking place. To when the shepherds actually saw the child and shared with everyone without the need to hold on to their blankets and shared what had been told them about this child. Then to the amazement of, of all who heard what the shepherds told them, to the shepherds then leaving, still blanketless, but drastically different people than who they were before an angel showed up and changed everything. And finally to Mary, who treasured all the words shared with her and pondered them in her heart. None of these characters knew what was coming next. We often assume Mary understood everything that was happening to her and in her and through her, but there's a danger in presumed familiarity with this story. She treasured all these words, but there are often nuances to discover in the original languages. She didn't treasure like we do with jewelry or our finest china or with our favorite Christmas ornaments. A closer look lets us see how she collected all these words. She took them in. She received them, even though it was all way too much to fully process in the moment. And she pondered them in her heart, which doesn't simply refer to a peaceful or meditative reflection on all the words and events shared with her. Rather, a closer look lets us see how it means to critique, to analyze, to weigh, or consider. Or to put it this way, it means, in a sense, to puzzle, which is exactly what we do every year with this child who is called the Prince of Peace who is being born into this world filled with raging conflicts, we puzzle it out. And we keep puzzling the news shared above the fields of Bethlehem. Fear not, for see, I am bringing good news of great joy for all the people. We keep puzzling it out. And we don't necessarily know what's coming next in a world still starving for good news of great joy. We do know that God invites us and keeps inviting us to drop our blankets. No matter how deep the darkness, God invites us to look for the light, and there we will find love. Because we also know how this child would tell us later on, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Christ gives us peace by giving us himself. The powers of darkness and death raged against Jesus' intrusion in this world. And the dark and deadly powers still rage because they know that they have been defeated by the incarnate Prince of Peace. And so we keep puzzling it out. We keep puzzling out what it means that God is with us and how centuries of his saints and followers have found Christ's presence available for them to lean into at every moment since. Howard Thurman, the philosopher, theologian, and civil rights leader, puzzled it out when he said, when the song of angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers and sisters, to make music in the heart. Friends, it seems as though even the unlikeliest among us, shepherds, a teenage girl, and even Linus, had enough faith to move away from fear, going blanketless into the night toward that good news of great joy awaiting them and awaiting us all. For indeed, once the blanket is dropped, the joyful work of Christmas begins. 